Hey, what's up you guys? You're watching Team APS, Paul here. In today's video, I've got five bold predictions for Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2017. Uh, these are things that I feel will happen over the course of the year. So I'm not saying like, boom, it's January 1st, you know, whatever is gonna get unbanned. I mean, just that like, I think these will be trends that we will see in the coming months um, as the game progresses and just sort of may not be player mentalities. It might be more Konami's game design, but yeah, so. Let's get started. Prediction number one, I think that Link Monsters will become more standardized. Now this seems like, well, duh, Paul. I mean, they're gonna release more, so of course they're gonna be more standardized. But I think that when I say that, I mean more like, they're going to become part of strategies. Right now, Link Monsters are not really ever part of most deck strategies. They're more like just, you make them so that you can do what you wanna do. So it's a lot like why people run, you know, like the Preta Plant and Brilliant Fusion Engine or like Gofu or Grinder Golem or Scapegoat just to quickly make Decode Talker or Mrs. Radiant or Proxy Dragon or whatever it is that just opens up their zones so they can use them. I think that in 2018, we will see more Link Monsters that are actually combo pieces for these decks and actually enable them and advance their game state as opposed to just being the necessary evils that no one really wants to do, but you gotta commit deck space to doing them. Um, and I think that the big advent of that is gonna be the Link Monsters from Link Reigns. Um, that's, you know, things like Crystron Needle Fiber, things like Heavy Metal Foes, Electromite, and, you know, Isol, Curious, the Gym Knight one, all of those, Alistair, just all that stuff that's kind of coming out soon. Those Link Monsters, I like their design so much more because they feel like they're actually like a part of the deck that belongs. Uh, they actually do something to advance the deck forward, either searching cards from the deck to the hand, or you know, sending stuff from the deck to the grave, or doing fusion summons, or recycling cards, or enabling stuff, or protecting. Whereas right now, the Link Monsters, at best, are kind of like protection, control, you know, decode talker, proxy dragon, those style of effects, or maybe outs like Borload. Because the only really like strong Link Monster combo-wise is Firewall Dragon. I mean, that thing just gets exploited every other day, but I mean, I don't feel like it's something that everyone wants to be using. It's just, it's powerful and broken, so you try to use it. If that makes any sense, you know, maybe you guys can just tell me if I'm making no sense here. But that's the idea. I think that Link Monsters over the course of 2018 will become a more natural part of the game. Each deck will get a Link Monster that it can use well and I think that's definitely a good thing. Prediction number two, columns matter a lot more. This is something that we are gradually beginning to see, but I think that in 2018, it's really gonna take off. Um, so, you know, right now we've got a few archetypes that kind of meddle around a little bit with columns. Um, magical Musketeers, for example, and to some slight degrees, things like Weathery and, you know, stuff like that. But with the stuff we've got on the horizon, um, things like, you know, the Mech Knights or Jack Knights, they really do kind of abuse the column mechanic or punish your opponent for putting multiple things in the same column. And it makes me think, you know, when you look at cards like Fuse Line, cards like Broken Line, those things that came out in Circuit Break, where it's like destroy a card in this thing's column or, you know, negate the activation of something that happened in this column, those cards are really cheap now. But don't you think it's a little bit suspicious that Konami printed them as secret and ultra rares? It's as if to say that somewhere down the line, these cards will be seen as like pseudo staples or counters to the column mechanic. Because, um, you know, Link Monsters alone made columns matter to some degree or another, but I think that archetypes more and more so are going to start really like utilizing these column mechanics. I know I reference them a lot because I do like the deck. Rockets, for example, they've got like a monster that destroys everything that was in its column when it gets destroyed, and they've also got one that like destroys the monster in the column and then the two things that are adjacent to it on either side, stuff like that, I think. And then, you know, the fact that you have to worry so much about monster placement already when you're doing your combos with like link monsters, because you don't want monsters to be in the way of like a certain extra deck spot, or you want them to be pointed to code talker, for example. You know, I think it really goes to show that columns are going to make a difference in Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's gonna to get to a point where you have to carefully consider every single aspect of them, not just for your own combos, but literally as counterplay for your opponent. Because, you know, just a really simple example with Jack Knights, if you start your turn by like normal summoning a monster and setting a card face down behind it, let's say it's a bottomless, then your opponent is now able to summon their Jack Knights 
straight onto you, like just because you made a predictable column play. So it gets to the point where you have to like put your monster over here and your spelling trap over here and like take all these things into consideration. I think that's a good thing, although I think that some of the downsides to it are that, you know, everyone's gonna need to have these column or zone play mats now, like it's gonna be a necessity. I hope that Konami can find a way to distribute those a little bit easier. Um, and yeah, and it might take a little bit longer to play turns, but overall I think it is a good thing and makes you go more strategic, so I don't have a big problem with it. Number three, I think that spirals are not going to make it to the summer. Uh, this is just a quick and easy prediction. Spirals feel like a very temporary deck. I don't think that, it, I mean like it's won everything it's been at and we know that we're gonna get a ban list in January, presumably. So um, I just don't think spirals are gonna, like there's no reason Konami should let another Zodiac problem happen again where a deck just lives that long and is that dominant. So I feel like Spirals are going to get hit. I don't think it's a deck that's worth investing in. I don't think that it's a deck that will stick around very long. My big problem with Spirals, and this ties into some of the earlier reasons, is Spirals are the only deck right now that can really and truly like abuse Link monsters. The second best might be World Chalice, but that deck is so fragile and has its own set of weaknesses. But Spirals can really use all the different Link monsters available right now and really like explode and keep pushing them out on the board. But it sucks because it's the top tier deck and I think that what Konami probably wants more than that is my first thing where Link monsters feel like they're more integrated into the experience and every deck can use Links and want to use Links. There's not like one deck that abuses them really hard. So I would like to see Spirals get hit and just every deck be able to make use of Link monsters in a more natural free flowing way. So yeah, my third prediction is that Spirals will get hit um, on the ban list in some capacity. I will make a more dedicated ban list video soon, but the basic gist here is that I think it's probably gonna come down to Spiral Resort getting hit and then like something else, don't know what, but that's the idea. Prediction number four, I think that the game is going to slow down in a way. Um, so, you know, right now we have this big problem with decks being super consistent, having loads of search cards, you know, a lot of things that don't have once per turn clauses, a lot of unbreakable boards and OTKs and crazy things that can happen early on. And then we've got like hand traps as the only way to stop it. But I think that in 2018, Konami is going to make an effort and I can kind of see the seeds of it now, but they're going to make an effort to kind of make this game a slower paced, more controlled game. And I say that because if you look at the archetypes from Code of the Duelist and Circuit Break, I've made videos on why I don't like them so much, but if you look at them, um, you'll notice that a lot of these archetypes aren't very like overpowered. There's a lot of restrictions, a lot of once per turns, a lot of kind of slow rolling effects. Take, you know, um, like Alter Geists, take Metaphys, take Rockets, those types of things, um, Vendreds or FA that kind of need time to build up. The only reason those archetypes aren't being played because they're new is because we've got Spirals, we've got Pendulum Magicians, and we've got like these kind of like holdover decks, like these Invoked and Paleozoic things. If those decks were to all get hit on the ban list in just kind of a different capacity, I think that we would see this move towards those archetypes, and those archetypes are a lot slower and more committal. And you can even tell, even if you like kind of take the archetypes out of the picture, cards like Double Summon are becoming more popular because you need to be able to commit to the board more uh, to make the link monsters. But I think that, that also means that we're not seeing as many just blatant plus ones and free summons happening from the deck and the grave and the banish zone. So I think that's a good thing. I think that, you know, if you look at Konami's card design, it does seem like nothing broken is coming out. And you know, that's kind of something I was actually asking on social media the other day is, you know, what's the next broken archetype going to be? Because if you look at Extreme Force, there are no blowout, you know, there's no new blowout deck to grab. Like, Jack Knights aren't great. And I mean, there's not really much past that. Um, Ten Dangles and stuff like that, they're all neat, but they're not broken. And Flames of Destruction doesn't seem to have much different. Although, I mean, like, there are those element sabers, but I don't think that they are like a swarmy OTK deck. It doesn't seem like it. So it seems like Konami is making a conscious effort not to make any crazy archetypes moving towards the summer, uh, at least. So I think that's a good thing. I see 2018 being a year where you go slows the roll and we get to more of a control-based game, which leads me into prediction number five. I think traps will make a return. So um, everyone's been saying traps are dead, and I hate to say it, but I mean, it's kind of true. The only relevant traps right now, Paleozoics don't count, is 
evenly matched. It's basically the only trap anyone's playing, and it's hardly even a trap. I mean, it kind of is like a hand trap in a way, and people only play it because it's just so brokenly powerful. And before that, the only trap that we really saw played was like Dimensional Barrier. It's a shame that we have all these like different trap hole cards, you know, Floodgate Trap Hole and Bottomless and Time Space and all that stuff. They don't get played. We have all these Mirror Force cards like Quaking Mirror Force and Storming and Drowning. They don't get played. You don't even see the Solemn cards all that much anymore. And then stuff like Breakthrough Skill, Phoenix Chain, Deprison, those went out the door ages ago. I think though, if this game slows down a bit more, traps could, could return to the forefront of the game and be like a part because it's something that I don't want to see traps go. I don't want Yu-Gi-Oh to be a game where it's monsters, spells, hand traps. I want, you know, just a balance of everything. And I think that if the game slows down, then there's more reason to play traps because instead of going for these hyper consistent broken combos with like triple terraformings and just like, you know, getting a field spell that searches everything for you or just whatever, it would be nice if you had to kind of slow roll your way to victory a bit more. So I feel that hand traps um, might go out of the picture if the game gets more balanced and we might see a return to regular trap cards. But that's just a prediction. There's really no way to know. So those are my five predictions for Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2018. I want to know what you guys think. Uh, these, you know, some of these might come true. Some of these might not be so well founded. You can let me know down in the comments. What do you think is going to change about Yu-Gi-Oh! this next year? Uh, yeah, we can talk about it. So that's all for the video. Remember, you can follow me on Facebook, you can follow me on Twitter, and you can also, of course, subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content. It's going to be it. I'll see you guys in the next one.